Hello, I'm Dom Hodgson, and together with Build a Light Show, we've created this video guide on, well, how to build a light show. We're still new to this. This is our first video in what will hopefully be a long running series. So there may be some technical errors, there may be some things that don't go right. So whilst we teach you to build a light show, we're going to learn how to build a video series. So as you said, I'm Dom Hodgson. That's me, the one on the right there. The other's my wife and daughter, and we run a pixel show. Now, if you're watching this video, it probably means that you've seen a light show on YouTube or in person and thought, wow, that looks really cool. I'd love to do that. And you found your way here. And let me tell you, it is really, really cool. Light shows are an incredible hobby. I've often said to people that a light show is like a model train set. You work on it all year round. And at the end of the year, you invite people around to be entertained, show off a little, let them play with it. And if you want to, you can raise money for good causes. I'm part of an organisation in the UK called ELF, European Lighting Fanatics, and we've raised over a quarter of a million pound over the last few years for charities and good causes, which is amazing. But did you catch what I said there? Throughout the year. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to involve family, spouses, even friends are going to help you on this journey, and we are too as a community. These things you can't find at B&Q yet, right? Everything that you do has to be built by yourself or ordered. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through our three most asked questions in this hobby. How much does it cost? Obviously, that's the question everybody wants to ask. And the answer is, it depends. For instance, how much do you know about electronics? For instance, can you wire up a standard British plug? Do you know that that's not a standard British plug? All right. It is a British plug, but it's not a three-prong plug. The joke didn't work otherwise. We have a scale, which is how much you can spend. So you can spend time in learning, in building yourself, or you can just spend money on getting somebody else to do it. So me, I'm somewhere in the middle where I build a lot of stuff myself, but I get pre-made uh, controllers, I get pre-made boxes and things like that, but I push all the lights myself that you'll see. All right, I get friends to do it as well. But you'll see that over the course of the next few videos. But I realise that that is a terrible answer. It depends. So let's give you some realistic examples. Let's take a small display. We've got here, we've got a singing face, two mini trees, two arches and two snowflakes. Absolutely good for his first year. Perfect. Um, the props and pixel cost for that, just looking at the website straight off, is about £630. But in this hobby, we can't just have props. We need a controller, we need some power, we need to hook them all up, and we need a player. We're going to go through all these terms later on. But what we're just going to do is we can just pick some standard things there. The controller, the pie, the power, everything will cost £480. So when you let's add another £100 for some supplementary bits that we need, some cables and things like that, and an SD card. So the extra bits will come to about £100. Now, when we look at that price, that's about £1,200. For our starting cost and that can seem a little bit overwhelming but what we have here is a foundation for our show for later on if we look at our current display here right next year we might want to add another singing tree so they can duet michael buble has got a, f a few duets that everybody loves we want to add a mega tree in the middle so adding another mega tree and a singing tree that for 410 pounds we've already got the base of the power we've already got the base of the controllers we don't need to add anything else and again, when we look back at that price, we can see that actually there are things around that are retail that are still, you know, if you want some good quality things that outside, like acrylics and things like that, things that are going to last, they do cost a serious amount of money. So let's think back to that. It depends. Because when we looked at the controller, we looked at a Falcon F-16, which is what I started with. But... If you want to stay small, you can go with an ESP art stick or even an ESP32 or something along those lines like a pie hat. But it all depends on what do you want your display to look like in a few years. On the Elf group, there's a lovely lady called Kathy who came to us with a three-year plan. And we mock and we joke and we laugh because nobody ever sticks to their three-year plan. Everybody always buys more or does something different. But it's good to have an idea of what you want your show to look like in the future. Let's take ours. So this was year one. In year one, we had two spinners and we had two trees and we had a matrix made out of strip, which was absolutely terrible. It was a terrible idea. But we built an F-16 because we wanted to go a little bit bigger. And that was our first display. That was our first year. We learned a few of the elements and we invested for that. We decided, do we go for F-16 or do we go for a pie hat? 
and we went for an F-16 because we had big plans. Little did we know that in 2020, we were going to be at home for most of the year, and we had to cancel lots of holidays, so we, we spent a lot on pixels. And we added lots of stuff. We added lots of elements. Singing trees, singing faces, singing bulbs. We added a P5 panel matrix. There's, there's so much there that we added, and we learned a lot of things as well. You can see my daughter in front. Um... And we all did it as a family. It's a family hobby for us. Year three, we decided instead of being at the front, let's move it to the back. And we hired some scaffolding to put it on there. We had a mega tree. We took a Wendy house that we found. And we put some floodlights in there. And we kept building and building and building until this year, we actually went a little bit further and added it to the front and the back of the house. And we created a walkthrough. But that wasn't in our three-year plan. That wasn't what we decided. But every year, we start to think about what we're going to add and how we're going to scale it and what we're going to do. What's going to happen this year? I don't know. But planning ahead, even a little bit, is going to save you money and time. You you, you are going to buy things that you're not going to need. right? We've all got the amount of stuff I have in this workshop that I bought originally that I thought I'd need, but I don't. So let's go back to how much does it cost. And this is another question is what do you have at home? Do you have a soldering iron? Do you have crimpers? Do you have certain tools that you'll need? And if you don't, don't worry. We have a video coming out telling you the tools that you will need and the tools that you'll want. The tools that you'll need, they, they don't cost that much. You'll need to practice with them. You'll need to learn how to use them. You will need to learn to make network cables. If you can right now, go and buy a network cable. Uh, push through. Push through is a good, especially if you're learning. Learn how to make network cables. You will be making a lot of them in this hobby. Uh, soldering you'll also need to learn that but we're going to have a video on that later on so don't panic and don't feel overwhelmed about this but just think about some of these terms and some of these skills that you're going to have to use so question number two is how does it all work and i get this question a lot on my show and so the answer is it depends i know i know it's a cop out but there are so many thousands of different ways that you can connect everything together and manage everything that I can't do you one single video on it. So what I can do is I can give you an overview and then you can think about how you want your show to work. We're going to take a look at some of the elements now and we're going to go through them and you can see how they interconnect and work with each other. The first one obviously is pixels or to everybody else in the world they're called Christmas lights. 90% of them that you'll find will be WS2811s, but there are also lots of other different chips and things like that. All you need to know, you put power in, you put data in, and they flash beautiful colours. I think you can see behind me here, we have a Christmas tree, which is going, and that is just on a colour wash. You will learn that a butterfly effect is the thing that your visitors will love the most, and it will annoy you because it's no effort whatsoever. They come in all many different shapes and sizes. They come in strip, they come in bullet, they come in pe pebble, they come in, but most of the time squares, most of the time you will get them in bullet form. Controllers, I've already mentioned a few. You've got the Falcon F-16, you've got the F-48, you've got the ESP, you've got Pi Hat. There's so many more and you can even build your own if you're that technically in mind. But the choice of what you need comes down to what do you want to do with it? Do you have a massive garden that you need to go over long distances? Do you have everything together? Do you have lots and lots of props? Or do you want everything all on one board, including all the player and everything? Those are things that you need to think about as you grow your show. Speaking of the show player, you need something to manage the show. So what happens, if we just go back a little bit, the pixels are the things which glow the colours. The controllers, they tell the pixels what colours to go, and the show player tells the controller what to do. The show player is usually just a Raspberry Pi with some free open source software on it, or you can run it on your computer uh, with X schedule or something like that. We tend to recommend having a Raspberry Pi. I know they're in short supply right now as of recording, but this is going to get better. And in the UK, we have some ability to get them. So just check out the groups. You'll need X lights. X lights is open source sequencing software. Download that now start to have a play with it you can actually right now map out your entire show with what lights you want you can upload a copy of your house you can take a picture of it put it over it without buying a single thing have a play with it we're going to have a full video soon on running through x lights and doing a demo house but you might as well get used to it you will be overwhelmed to start off with this software can be used to run drive throughs with millions and millions of lights I was overwhelmed when I first looked at it, and um, we'll go through it on this video. You'll need a network switch. Don't ask, just get one. There are £20 on Amazon. Make sure you get one with gigabit, but 
just just get one please it will make it so much more easier so you use x lights to create something called a sequence file this is a package of not only what the lights do but any video any audio all in one that gets sent to fpp which is falcon pi player and that will tell the controller what to play and when what colors to tell the pixels to go to everything is managed from the show player and they're all connected by the network switch and this simple setup generally works very well. You don't need to create a show network these days. Everything will work. Everything in this video that we've covered, we are going to do other videos on it. You are going to learn all this. Don't panic. But it is a lot of work. We can't hide the fact from that. Question number three is, how do I get started? And much like the other questions, the answer is, it. Dip no, it's not. The answer is fairly simple because how you get started is by thinking about some basic answers to questions that I'm going to ask you. What is the future plan for your display? You know, you've got some idea right now of what you want it to look like. What do you want it to look like in a few years time? What are you willing to invest both in money wise? You know, how much are you willing to spend? How much are you allowed to spend? How much are you going to say to your spouse that you've spent, but really you've bought something else without telling them? You need to have an idea in your head about what that number is. More importantly than money is time. This hobby takes up a lot of time. Every week we have Zoom chats throughout the year on the Elf Zoom. We have training. There, there are people that join our group in October because they want to start early. And if you want to start early, you need to be starting in February, March. And that is the biggest investment in this hobby. It is time. M money helps. M money gets you the lights. But time is the biggest investment. So before you start buying anything, before you go on Build a Light Show and buy a controller and buy 20,000 lights and do all this, just wait. And I know you're not going to listen to me. I know that you've got this video open in a tab and you're already browsing through right now looking at the props that you can have. I know you won't listen to me because I didn't listen when I was first told. I bought a load of stuff. But if you just wait a few videos, you'll have a better idea of what you want and what you can achieve. In the next episode, we're going to make some stuff light up, which is always exciting. Uh, right now, we haven't written that episode, so I don't know what it's going to be. But when it's here, it, there will be a, a, a link somewhere up here, as it does with YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Dom Hodgson, and this has been How to Build a Light Show.